Okay, so and that uh, explains us the photoelectric effect completely. Uh, so uh, the Einstein equation is a powerful uh, mathematical expression that easily explains this experiment on photoelectric effect. So this was uh, the puzzle that uh, no before uh, quantum theory before 1900 people knew that uh, light is a wave phenomena and it was. Uh, Easily, uh, most of the phenomena connected with the light, like uh, diffraction, interference, uh, propagation of light, could easily be explained by Maxwell's uh, electromagnetic theory. But then, uh, from 1900, there was a series of experiments which uh, pointed towards that light is not a wave, but it can also behave like particles. So. Uh, our uh, theory had to be modified and uh, there were a series of proposals there about the behavior of the of the of the light and it was very clear that uh, light uh, in these experiment at least behaves like particles and uh, acts like photons of energy is equal to h nu and if we have that proposal then all these experiments can easily be addressed so we were physics was and you know at, at crossroads so we really don't know how to uh, deal with the situation then uh, in uh, classical uh, mechanics, I mean, in uh, physics before 1900, we also had uh, this concept of particles like electrons. They are particles and they behave differently from waves. They can, their trajectories and uh, their dynamics can be controlled by the laws of mechanics. And uh, this also, you know, was, uh, sh was challenged by this man, Lewis D. Broglie. So he had a proposal that uh, light uh, has a dual nature because we saw that light behaves both as wave, waves as well as particles. So the material particles can also have this 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 property and that uh, electrons, for example, since we know that they are particle-like uh, objects, they can in some circumstances behave like waves. So they can suitably behave like waves the way the uh, light behaves like particles. And so what he did is that he had a proposal that. Uh, the wavelength of these particles is dictated by their momentum. So he proposed this equation, lambda is equal to h by mv, in his PhD thesis. <laughs> Actually, his PhD thesis was initially rejected because this was such a new idea that people didn't believe in it. But only after it was experimentally confirmed that uh, he got the name and fame, and he in fact shared Nobel Prize with the people who experimentally confirmed this finding. So this was something very bizarre are to understand you know something that is particle say you have a football and i'm telling you that it also has a wave associated with it this is quite mind uh, in quite counterintuitive and you know even experts uh, are troubled with this kind of understanding in fact uh, uh, people say that uh, that it's very it's not difficult to understand but nobody understands it right so in, I, I quote uh, Richard Feynman that he says that these kinds of phenomena uh, they, they are uh, beautiful in the sense that uh, humans cannot understand them in the sense they understand everything else but you know without these uh, ideas we cannot help to uh, without these ideas we cannot uh, understand uh, what's happening at the fundamental level. Now you may ask a question that, okay, if this is so weird that we cannot understand, then uh, how do we know it's right? The, the problem is that, uh, that once you have this proposal, uh, we have uh, a complete mathematical structure that explains us how things work and we are able to make predictions. And that is power in, uh, uh, that is a uh, power contained in these statements. And so you may never understand how electron, how wave is associated with electron, you may never understand it. And we don't need to understand that because with this lambda is called H by MV, I'm able to address the experimental finding. And that's more important in physics. So <clears throat> this uh, fact that electrons are associated with waves, uh, this was confirmed by what's called as electron diffraction experiment. And this experiment, you know, this is very interesting experiment. So what happens in this experiment, you have, um, <clears throat> 
you have a filament that uh, beams down an electron, so an electron beam emerges from a filament and strikes a nickel target, then electron is bounce off. So then what is, what is, where is the wave theory? The wave theory is in the fact that as I move the detector, I find that these electrons have preferred directions. And, and this is, they form patterns which are similar to diffraction patterns of photons. So that, that tells us that, you know, they, there are some angles at which large number of electrons are coming out. And I can predict at what angle these electrons will come out if I apply this fundamental formula, lambda is equal to h by mv. If I assume that electrons are not particles, but they are waves, and the wavelength associated with them is h by mv, then I'm able to easily address this experiment of electron diffraction. So, <clears throat> Uh, but suppose you 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 are very curious about you want to see the wave nature of the electron you want to beam a photon on the electron and see how it is waving what is its wavelength but then you will destroy this experiment the the fact is that there is no experiment in the world that will that because of which you can actually see what is waving inside the electron or what is how is wave associated with the electron all you can see is this experimental finding the result of this experiment the data that i get is only explainable if I take this equation into mind. If I take this equation and build a model, and then only then I can address this experiment. This experiment was done by Davison and German. They got Nobel Prize for uh, addressing this experiment. And uh, in fact, uh, the Nobel Prize was also given to de Broglie for the same experiment. So this uh, way we were, uh, we, this experiment established that even particles have wave phenomena. So before, uh, quantum mechanics, we were having two different uh, um, uh, aspects, the particle aspect of the matter and the wave aspect of electromagnetic radiation. There were two things to study, the material and the radiation. The matter was, uh, matter was having, uh, uh, the fundamental concept related with matter was the concept of particle. The fundamental concept related with the radiation was the concept of the wave. But this all changed from 1900. And what we figured out that the wave can act like particles and particles can act like waves. So this is called the wave-particle duality and it's fundamental in our understanding of um, microscopic uh, physics at the microscopic level. So in our lecture two, we will uh, talk about how these ideas shaped uh, and uh, we will uh, start shape the foundations of uh, quantum mechanics and we'll start with uh, concepts like uh, Schrodinger equation and so on. So I hope that uh, uh, I covered these fundamentals and introduction to the quantum theory in my first lecture. Thank you.